One of these men has sailed across the Atlantic Ocean three times, alone. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Hans Lindemann. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Hans Lindemann. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Hans Lindemann. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Dr. Hans Lindemann and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Polly Bergen. Next, Mr. Don Amici. Then back, we're glad, for a second visit, Miss Monique Van Voren. And finally, Tom Poston. <laughs> now, panel, would you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Dr. Hans Lindemann, have sailed across the Atlantic Ocean alone three times. The purpose of my voyages was to study the problems of survival at sea. My first trip was made in a native dugout canoe fitted with sails. My second and most arduous voyage was made with the aid of self-hypnosis in a sailing kayak 17 feet long and 2 feet 11 inches at its widest point. This crossing took 72 days during which my craft capsized twice during storms. My most recent trip was made in the comparative luxury of a 30-foot sailboat. Signed, Dr. Hans Lindemann. <laughs> Panel, as you heard, these three gentlemen all claim to be Dr. Hans Lindemann, scientist, adventurer, lonely sailor, I guess you might call him. Gentlemen, are you all set and comfortable? Very well, let's start this first round then with uh, Don Amici. Don, if you please. Thank you, bud. Number three, what did you use to change salt water to drinking water? I couldn't. I had to catch the rainwater. Uh, number one, what did you use to change uh, salt water to uh, drinking water? Can't be changed. I beg your pardon? I, did. I couldn't change it. You could not change it? No. Uh, number two, uh, how many square feet of sails did you have on your first crossing? Number three, how many square feet of sails did you have on your first crossing? Thirty-two. With the four sail you mean to? Yes, all uh, total and a half. sales. I beg your pardon? Thirty-two and a half square feet. Thirty-two and a half. Number one, how many square feet do you have in your first crossing? Thirty-six. Thirty-six feet. Number uh, uh, two, in a storm, do you run with the storm or against it? Oh, with, with the storm. Number three? With the storm. With the storm. Number uh, uh, one. Monique? Uh, number two, what was your port of departure? Las Palmas. Number three, what was your port of arrival? Uh, which of the trips? The first, second, or third? On the first trip. The first trip. That was uh, Tan Croix, number 39. Number one, what was your port of departure the first time? Las Palmas. Number two, what did you use for food during your trip where you were on sea for 72 days? I used uh, raw, I ate raw fish, I caught fish, and I had with me some tins. Normal food. Number three, what was the first land that you saw on your voyage of 72 hours? That was uh, Martinique. Tom Poston. I'm going to ask some more about the food. Number one, thank you, bud. Number one, uh, on the trip that you were in the water for 72 days, what kind of food did you take? I had canned foods, I had garlic, I had onions, I had beer. No wonder you traveled alone. <laughs> Number two, who is Colin Fox? Do you know? I know only he's a very famous sailor. Uh, number three, can you tell me what the prevailing winds are in a summer crossing of the Atlantic? In a southern latitude, it's from east to west, and vice versa in a northern latitude. Number one, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> Is that so? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what does the term yar mean? I didn't understand it. Yar. Number three, do you know what yar means? That's one. 
Polly Bergen. What does your arm mean? <laughs> I don't know. I'm no sailor. <laughs> Number two, uh, this dugout canoe of yours, did you dig it? <laughs> no. Uh, man, he loved it. <laughs> uh, well, did uh, did a, a native uh, dig it for you? Natives did it. I beg your pardon? Natives did it. Oh, the natives dig it. Uh, number three... <laughs> <laughs> number three, um... Uh, it said here in the affidavit that you, you sailed in this kayak with self-hypnosis. Uh, could you hypnotize me? No, it's self-hypnosis. Autotrine. Oh, you can only hypnotize yourself? Yes. Uh, I was going to ask you if I could have the next trance. Oh! Wait, oh no, On that, that's it. Now it's time to... <laughs> oh! I dig that the most. Without consultation, will you mark your ballot, panel, please? And in so doing, vote for number one... Number two, or number three. Team of challenges, of course, as always, will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All right, panel, have you all voted? Everyone marked your ballot? Oh, you're early. For whom did you vote? Well, I almost voted for number two because I don't dig canoes either, but yeah. I voted for number three because, uh, I don't know why I voted for him. <laughs> I must have had a reason at the time. I can't. <laughs> Don Amici, which one do you think is the I right? voted for number two, but I'll promise you, I have no reason at all. I, uh, I can't fathom this one little bit. Thought, well, I thought Colin Fox was a model. Um, well, he sailed across the uh, Atlantic in a canoe or something. He did? Mm -hmm. He was a model sailor. Can all I right, Monique, your vote, please. Uh, I voted for number two, uh, strictly on the basis of his tie. I think he ties his knot here like an outdoor man. <laughs> Wait a minute. Nothing like having good sound reasons. Uh, Tom Poston, what about your vote? I voted for number three because uh, Colin did sail across the uh, Atlantic alone in a canoe, but uh, I don't think he's a famous sailor in the sense that number two answered the question, and number one is the right one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, vote along at home with us now and see how right or wrong you are as we discover it now, as we learn which one of these gentlemen is the real sailor, adventurer, scientist. So may I ask the real Dr. Hans Lindemann to please stand up. I can say, Monique, is that yours was a tie vote. You know, you can tell a lot about a man by his tie or by his shoes, but I can't see the shoes, but I can see the tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it paid off for you. Now let's find out about the others. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Tino Koch. I was born in Switzerland. I'm the ski and the tennis pro at the Concord Hotel in Kiamisha Lake, New York. Thank you, sir. Number three, would you tell us your real name and what you do? My name is Bent Van Berg. I was born in Norway. I'm the editor of a trade magazine, Norwegian American Commerce, and a correspondent for Radio Norway and Press. Thank you, sir. Well, when we got that score, we find it was a two and two, so in that sense, it was a tie vote, too. There were exactly two incorrect votes in any event, at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. On your way out, you'll find that there is a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Good night, and good luck to you. <laughs> now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Maria del Pilar Roldan. What is your name, please? My name is Maria del Pilar Roldan. What is your name, please? My name is Maria del Pilar Roldan. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this second affidavit? I, Maria del Pilar Roldan, am Mexican. My main interest is in fencing. I started fencing when I was 13, and to date I have won the Mexican Women's Championship five times. I represented my country in the 1956 Olympics in Melbourne, Australia. 
In June, I entered the United States Fencing Championships in Los Angeles. I won the Women's Foils title. I am the first woman from another country to ever win a United States Fencing Championship. Signed, Maria del Pilar Roldan. Three charming ladies this time, panel, all claiming to be Maria del Pilar Roldan, United States fencing champion. Comfortable ladies, ready to play our game? All right, let's begin this round with uh, Monique Van Voren. Monique? Number one, in the position on guard in fencing, what are the positions of the feet? Well, one is like this and the other is across. <laughs> one is like this and the other is across. Oh, of course. Sure. Number two. Same question? The same question. Though uh, the right feet is, is in front of the left uh, foot in this, in this position. Mm -hmm. Number three, it says in your affidavit that you came in June and that you won the uh, woman championship here in the United States. Who was the man of the United States who won? What was his name who won the championship at the same tournament you participated? It was mi Mr. Paleta. Number two. Mr. Paleta. Tom Poster. Thank you, Bart. Uh, number two. As a Mexican, can you tell me the location of Old Mountain? The Old Mountain? What does Old Mountain mean in Mexico? La Vieja Montaña. Uh, <laughs> uh, number one. As a native of Mexico, can you tell me what waiting for the jaguar means. Well, in Spanish? No, what, what is the expression? I don't know what in Spanish. What does waiting for the jaguar mean? Well, waiting for a car. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to bad? Take it. Polly, please. I'm so con You confuse me so much, Tom. Jaguar is an animal, too, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. I that's all I can tell you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, now that's a big help. Uh, uh, <laughs> And number two, how do you score a, a, a point in a fencing match? A point when you touch the opponent. Can you touch the opponent any place or a specific place? Well, the woman in the, uh, it's only in the fore, it's supposed to be from the waist up, not the head or the arm. I see. You get an extra point if you cut a Z and... No. <laughs> they don't really do that. No. <laughs> I love that show. Do you watch that yes, show? Yes, sir. That's wild. Uh, number three, have you ever watched that show? Is he really good? Talking about Zorro. Zorro. Oh, no. <laughs> Sometimes. Huh? <laughs> I don't think he's good. He isn't really very think good. He's good. No. Number one. Amici, oh, uh, wait a minute. Number girl. one, where was the tournament held in Los Angeles? In the Statler Hotel. In the where? Statler Hotel. Uh, number uh, three, where did the term touche start? Touche? Number uh, uh, two, what is a repost? A repost is uh, when you repost. Number one, what is a repost? Well, it's when you are relaxing. Uh, number, uh, uh, number two, what is the difference between a foil and an epi? A foil is a, a florete, and an epi is a, 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 a florete, and the epi is a saber, the different uh, kind of blade. Yeah. For that difference, it's time to vote. Without consultation panel, as usual, mark your ballots. Selecting this time, number one, number two, or number three. Everyone voted quickly tonight. All right, Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number two. Uh, I'm sort of, uh, she seems, first of all, to know an awful lot about fencing, uh, I think, from the way she talks. And she was so cute up there, you know? <laughs> She's very pretty, isn't yeah, she? she is. Yeah. <laughs> Don, your vote, please. Well, I, I voted for uh, number three. I didn't think some of the answers I got from uh, one and two were exactly right. Okay. Monique, who do you think is the real one? Well, I voted for number one because when I asked number two and number three who was the U.S. champion, they gave me a name. I don't know his name. I know he's from Boston, and it was not Paletta. So I think maybe number one. Okay. Tom, what about your selection? I voted for number three. I also hit the microphone. It makes a terrible sound. Sorry. I voted for number three because of uh, various reasons known only to me personally. <laughs> Our votes are in. We don't, we've made up our minds, have you? Well, check it with us now as we learn how right or wrong we have been. 
and discovering the identity of the real United States fencing champion. So will the real Maria del Pilar Roldan please stand up. Thank you very much, Maria. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is Carmen Papanicola. I'm a secretary with Marshall and Company. I'm from Argentina, and I've never been to Mexico. Thank you. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name, and what do you do? My name is Aide Malagón. I am an international singer and dancer. I am from the Dominican Republic, and I am married to a lawyer in Brooklyn, <laughs> Anthony Zangara. <laughs> Of course, we did the last, or the first round, I should say. There were two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 from Marlboro. Not bad when you consider that at least we hope you had as much fun as we had in having you here. On your way out, you'll find a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Good night, and good luck to you all. <laughs> Incidentally... Maria Roldan has requested that since she is an amateur athlete, that her winnings be sent to the Mexican Federation of Fencing, which will be done. Do you have a quick question? Uh, do, they, do they say something different from touche in Mexico? I don't know, but I rather would imagine they do. Oh, because yes, I know that's she didn't understand expression. what it was. Yeah. And I, want... I imagine being French is confused for a bit. We'll ask oh, her afterwards. Oh, is it French? I thought it was American. Touche? <laughs> French? Well, they say it in America. <laughs> yes, they do. You're so right. Yes, that's where the expression touchy comes from. We'll get back to the game in just a minute. Incidentally, I just found out that Paletta is the name of the American foils champion. So, so I probably meant the fence champion. Probably did. Well, we'll mend our fences later, but right now, let's have our third team of challenges. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Charles Hurlbert. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Charles Hurlbert. What is your name, please? My name is Dr. Charles Hurlbert. Again, panel, direct your attention, if you will, to your copies of this affidavit. I, Dr. Charles Hurlbert, am a dentist and a missionary. I was born in the United States, but as an infant, I was taken to the Belgian Congo by my missionary parents. I returned to the United States for college and dental school. I have been in the Belgian Congo as a dentist missionary for the past three and a half years. My family and I recently were involved in an international news story. While returning here on leave with my wife and three daughters, our airliner was forced down in Hungary by communist fighter planes. Signed, Dr. Charles Hurlbert. Three men this time, panel, each claiming to be Dr. Charles Hurlbert, dentist, missionary. You all set, gentlemen? Very well, let's ask Polly Bergen to begin this round. Polly? Bud, will you please explain to the audience that I didn't mean touche was a French word. I meant it was used in America, so I thought maybe it was used in Mexico, so they won't think I'm too stupid, even though I didn't guess anybody yet. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen of our television audience, Polly Bergen knew that touche was a French word, but used in American, so you won't think she's too stupid when you start asking questions. Thank you, Ah, <laughs> uh, Number one, what does touche mean? <laughs> Touched. Thanks. <laughs> see? Uh, let's see. Number one, um, it, I, in, in, um, in the Belgian Congo, it says you were, and they have um, um, witch doctors down there, don't they? Yeah. Do they have witch dentists? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, those weird ones. Uh, do they? I don't think so. No. Number two, two I have that one. What's a periodontist? Number two. A uh, periodontist yes. is someone who works in the government. Thank you. I see okay. nothing. Uh, right, number, number one, what is the newest type drill run by? By air. Uh, number two, uh, number three, how much faster is it than the old type drill? It turns approximately at 250,000 revolutions a minute. Uh, number one, what do you use to deaden the mouth with? Procaine. Uh, number three, what do you use to deaden the mouth with? Procaine. Do you ever, do you ever, uh, uh, is, does it ever have adrenaline in it, number three? No. Number one, do you ever put adrenaline in it? Yes. Uh, number uh, uh, one, what is an orthodontist? 
Number three, what is an orthodontist? An orthodontist is a person who straightens teeth. Uh, Monique? Number two, when you do not use Novocaine, what is the name of the gas you use? Uh, well, that would be nitrous oxide or... Uh... Number three? <clears throat> nitrous oxide or laughing gas. Number one, it says here that in your affidavit that you went to the Belgium Congo and you are the son of missionary parents. What denomination of church? Baptist. Number two, what city were you in the Belgium Congo? Mutambo. Number three, what is the population of the Belgium Congo? Approximately 13 million. Number one, what is the population? It's about 13 million. Number two, what is the uh, biggest river that is near the Stanley Falls in the Belgium Congo? The, uh, next to the, uh, to the, to, uh, that would be uh, Jungan River. The what? Jungan. No. Tom Post. Thank you, Rod. Number two, uh, people have canine teeth, right? Yes. Do canines have people teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding around here a little bit. <laughs> the bark is worse than his bite. <laughs> Number three, what does touche mean exactly? <laughs> I'll ask number one, what is Vince's? The disease of the gum. Thank you. Number three, what's the difference between Novocaine and Monocaine? Uh, I never heard of Monocaine, but I do know Novocaine. It's number one, what is Monocaine? I don't know. Number the... two, what is Monocaine? Monocaine. We don't use it. All right. I don't Whatever it is, we don't use it, but we do vote right now because it's time to do that. And will you please mark your ballots, panel? And as before, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Has everybody voted? Okay, Monique. Oh, wait a Mark minute. your ballots, panel. Get set. <clears throat> All right. Polly, for whom did you vote this time? I had to get one right tonight. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's awful when you miss all three. I pick number two. Number two. All right. Okay. <laughs> your vote will register for number two. Don, what about your vote? I, I voted for number two. I thought I found uh, uh, some answers that weren't exactly correct from one to three. <laughs> and Monique, what about your selection? <laughs> I voted for number two because I think number three has too many good answers. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom, what about your vote? Listen, I, I voted for number two, but honest to goodness, I thought I was taking a terrible chance. I thought nobody else would vote for number two, and uh, it turns out, you know, I was accusing myself of being stupid and everything, but... We all are. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, well, let's see if it's unanimous right now. I will explain this one. I don't know, Polly, but in any event, let's find out as we ask the real... I'd feel all right. Yeah, just you and I. We'll cheat between us, okay? That'd be number three. All right, let's see. As we discover the identity of which of these gentlemen is the real dentist missionary, may I ask the real Dr. Charles Hurlbert to please stand up. very much. Number two, you fooled everybody. You were asked the least questions, but maybe silence is what did it. I don't know. Would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is Alan Gillespie, and I publish Living Music, the magazine with a hole in the middle and records inside. <laughs> and number three, would you tell us your real name and what you do? Uh, my name is Alfred Bojan, and I'm a landscape contractor from Bronxville, New York. I to fool everybody on the panel, which means, of course, four incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000 from Marlboro. Plus, on your way out, you will find a carton of Marlboro cigarettes for each of you. Enjoy them, as I know you will. Good night and good luck. Back in just a moment after an important message about your health. Well, I guess that's all the time we have for tonight. Touche, ladies and gentlemen, touche. 
Uh, Don, I hate to say goodbye to you for a while, but you're going out to Hollywood, I understand, to make a new picture, aren't you? With, yes, uh... that's right, bud. So I'll be gone for a little while, but I hope you ask me back when I get back in New York. Well, tell me first the name of the picture. Elmer Gantry. Elmer Gantry. With right. Burt Lancaster? Burt Lancaster and Gene Simmons, yes. Should be kind of fun. We'll be watching for that. Hurry back to you. I guess that's all for tonight, so good night, panel. Good, good night, night Bud. Good night. Now, this is Bud Collier saying touche from Marlboro and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To tell the truth is Marshall Jim Bill Cotton, in association with the CBS Television Network. This is Bergen Cotton by Rudy.